everyone. Welcome to Valley Homes on TV. I'm Debbie Indahar Giordano along with Todd Flesner. Hello, everyone. We're here again uh, to bring you uh, some interesting folks uh, around the, the Bay Area, City of Milpitas, City of San Jose. And um, we've been doing this show now. I think we're going on a, our 11th year. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, you can catch us on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 6.30 p.m. on Channel 26 or Saturday and Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. Yep, so yep. thanks for joining us. And so, yeah, one of the things we do that's, that's a lot of fun for us, we get to introduce people um, to our Milpitas community, and I'm excited about today. Um, I am too. Yeah, this, this, um, <laughs> Joe Newman is, is joining us. Jo thanks for coming along, Joe. Absolutely my pleasure. All right, and, um, you know, the, the penguin may have given it away. Um, it's like a 75-degree warm day, California day <laughs> out, but, uh, you, you know, you, you got your penguin, uh, you got the, the, the frost, you got the, the cold. Uh, we're talking Christmas in the park. Christmas in the park. A Yay! Yay! Exactly right. it, South Bay tradition. A South Bay tradition. It, it is. A South Bay tradition, truly. Yeah, absolutely. Tradition. Truly. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thanks for joining us this afternoon. And, uh, yeah, we're going to learn a little bit more about the behind the scenes, what goes on with Christmas in the park. But absolutely. Before we do that, let, let's introduce you to folks. Um, maybe give people a little bit of an idea of your background, where you grew up, uh, went to school. Uh, my pleasure. Thank you. Uh, I'm honored to be on the show today. Thank you very much. Uh, I uh, uh, grew up outside of Chicago. I grew up in a small ah. suburb outside of Chicago. Mm -hmm. uh, my family relocated to San Jose in uh, the late 80s. The late okay. 80s. My parents still live on the west side of San Jose, and uh, we love San Jose. Our whole family does. I was introduced to Christmas in the Park once we moved out here. It was, it was one of the events that was out here, and it reminded me of the way that they tend to celebrate Christmas in the Midwest. It's a little bit different. It's a little bit more more community-minded. Mm -hmm. uh, there's lots of these public displays and things of that nature. I was immediately attracted to it. Now, for me personally, I, I guess I grew up on the west side of San Jose. Mm -hmm. uh, I went away to school in San Luis Obispo. I okay. uh, was drawn back to the Bay Area. Uh, my initial uh, uh, return to the Bay Area was in tech. I was in sales. Uh, for years and years and years, I was in sales. Uh, and I was overjoyed to make the transition from sales about 10 years ago to nonprofit work, uh, okay. working okay. in fundraising in, okay. in nonprofits in general. Okay, and that's great. my background. Well, nice background so um you mentioned uh, growing up San Jose. what keeps you what what do you like most about the bay area uh the diversity uh the diversity in the bay area is one of the things that i that i think is is probably uh, one of the what keeps me here i, I just most love people say mm -hmm. yeah. I, 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 i'm not surprised yeah. uh you know uh you could drive anywhere in this bay area and um, I, I i've always been in love with the bay area since we moved here uh, i can't i can't imagine myself ever moving back to illinois and dealing with another winter <laughs> uh you know yeah, it's just not, not not in the cards not in the cards okay well good <laughs> Well, so that, that's kind of a little bit of your background. Uh, what is it you're doing now? Tell us a little bit about Christmas in the Park and your role there. Christmas in the Park uh, is is just one of my favorite things that I've ever had a, uh, an opportunity to work for. Christmas in the Park is an independent nonprofit. We are celebrating our 39th year in downtown San Jose. We're coming up on our 39th year this season. Uh, we run 40 days, uh, 55 exhibits, 750,000 people come through Christmas in the Park in downtown wow. San Jose wow. every holiday season. Uh, my role as sponsorship development manager, uh, you know, is to is to generate the revenue from sponsors that allows us to keep this event free to the public, that mm -hmm. allows us to keep this event fresh and new every year, relevant to the youngsters that are coming, relevant to their parents, mm -hmm. making an enjoyable event for everybody. Well, um, you your folk you folks had some difficulty a few years ago, didn't you? It was an amazing transition that we were able to make. So for mm -hmm. 32 years, from 1980 until about 2012. Christmas in the Park was owned and operated by the city of San Jose. Yeah. We mm -hmm. love the city of San Jose. So, you know, there, there, there's an extensive story that goes back a little further, but the city of San Jose cared for Christmas in the Park and developed it and brought it back every year. In 2012, mm -hmm. the city was going through a lot of challenges. We all remember those challenges, mm -hmm. budget challenges, right. uh, pension mm -hmm. challenges, please. Right. And the city just couldn't do it anymore. They couldn't uh, okay. fund and staff so Christmas in the happened. Park. That's when we converted to an independent 501c3, uh -huh. which mm -hmm. we remain today, board of 20 five people okay. run Christmas in the Park. Okay. Uh, at that point in 2012, Jason Minsky, our executive director, took over. He is still in charge today, and he okay. leads our team of four uh, staff members. Yeah. Okay. So you you guys then you work year round on, on this project. It's a, yeah it's it's a, I love telling people yeah. the story about how there's four full time staff employees mm -hmm. of Christmas in the Park that work year round. Jason, our executive mm -hmm. director, myself, wow. Shelley Romeo, a project manager, yeah. Chris Bradford, our COO, 
Chris is at the uh, is at the warehouse now working on the displays for next year. So now, what do you do the other three hundred twenty five days a year? You know, and not having displays. Uh, we are we're cleaning, uh, we're cleaning, we're preparing, uh, we're developing our partnerships with all of our sponsors. Uh, we're working with the city uh, to 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 envision the future of our event to maximize the opportunity. Cleaning. So where do you store all your ah, stuff? Excellent then? question. Christmas in the Park, uh, as part of our original contract with the city, maintains a forty thousand square square foot we call it the display shop mm -hmm. it's in um, that south of, just south of downtown at the uh, central service yard okay. uh, it's a it's an old beech nut factory as well, uh, mm -hmm. factory uh, warehouse it's magnificent love to invite anyone here to come down and visit our what we love giving tours of mm. our 40,000 square it's anyone who appreciates Christmas loves our warehouse and uh, it's just filled with everything that we do all right terrific so um, so now yeah, you know, you've got all these attractions and, and uh, displays and things. Uh, you know, where, what's the genesis for those? Are they the same things every year? Or do you guys develop more of those? And, and how do you involve, you know, other community groups in that? It's an excellent question. Uh, you know, we are always continually trying to evolve the event, yeah. but it, it shows, uh, if, I, if, I, if I can sort of, it's one of the challenges is we're walking that fine line of preserving the tradition, preserving those yeah. displays which families have been coming for 20 and 30 years to see, yeah. while at the same time introducing new displays that are taking advantage of the Bay Area and our Silicon Valley as we know it today. Mm -hmm. uh, we are constantly looking to our tech companies in the mm -hmm. area and saying, come and share with us your technology. Come mm -hmm. and share your new lighting technology with our audience here at Christmas in the Park. Mm -hmm. We want to you know, share that kind of technology and keep it going. So, so you reach out to those groups? Absolutely. And how about the nonprofits? How do you work with those groups? We, we have several nonprofits profits that we've had in relationships with for years. Habitat for Humanity. We do a program with Habitat Humanity. Uh, it's in, I believe, its seventh year where uh, uh, we organize or, uh, other companies to, uh, to come in and build small displays in the park. It's magnificent. Mm -hmm. We've been working with Toys for Tots for, I think, over 20 years at this point. We mm -hmm. stuff VTA buses full of toys. The mayor comes out every year. It's oh, just a yeah, joyous occasion. Yeah, yeah, we have some we, we have some great partnerships. Did you, was that your idea? I, I wish I could take credit for it. No, <laughs> that, this is one of our long term <laughs> ideas that goes wow, back. What a great and uh, yeah, definitely. Idea. We work closely with lots of uh, organizations. We get some great support from the county of Santa Clara. I want to point that out as well. Uh, sheriff Lori Smith and her uh, 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 and, and the sheriff's department provide uh, uh, volunteer services through the uh -huh. through the organization through the county. Uh, we're very fortunate to have some great relationships there with the city, with the county. Right. Yeah. You, know, you know, I kind of think back. You know, when my kids were younger, yeah, we would like adopt a tree, right? And oh, so, yeah, yeah you, you make your ornaments. You go down to Christmas in the park, and right. you you know. You you decorate your tree and you, you know, and you had, you know your community group had their tree their display in the park. That's still uh, absolutely. Uh, you know the opportunity to participate mm -hmm. spreads across the spectrum. Right, we love it when families come out and will uh, or, or other nonprofits will buy trees. We give them the opportunity to decorate their own tree, mm -hmm. bring it out there. Another. Uh, uh, opportunity in that same vein is our community stage. We build this community stage that allows for so many of these groups, whether it's Girl Scout groups, local dance groups, uh, to get up there uh, virtually at a very reasonable cost. Mm -hmm. It just covers the cost. Mm -hmm. But we've got great speakers and great microphones, mm -hmm. and we really allow them to, to reach their audience and, and, and to really have a great experience over the holidays. All right. Yeah, All right. So let's see. Um, th what are some of the large attractions? Uh, well, you know, there's pretty much one that dominates, and it's Santa. We've yeah. got Santa for free yeah. leading up until December 25th every year, uh, and that is, it's our biggest draw. By far, it's our biggest draw. Mm -hmm. Another attraction that people have really grown fond of over the years is our gourmet hot cocoa. People come to Christmas ah. in the Park to get the hot mm -hmm. cocoa that we provide every year. I know year. they have it's, churros out there. And the churros, churros. are <laughs> unbelievable. I can, I can oh, yeah. vouch for the oh, churros. Yeah. The churros <laughs> are magnificent without question. I just don't know if I've had the cocoa. I'm sure I've we'll had We'll get you cocoa. back this year. We'll get you back, and we'll get you some cocoa. Yeah, it's fantastic. When the cocoa, as I remember, is right next to the ice rink. Is that connected with? Uh, they, uh, as a matter of fact, they expanded. So there's okay. two locations for the okay. same okay. cocoa dealer because yeah. okay. there's that's the demand. That's reflective okay. of the demand. Uh, they've got their own Facebook page. They get uh, Instagram. Uh, yeah. It's great. It's really right. awesome. Um, Liability insurance. How does that work? How do you uh, we take it very it? seriously. We take it extremely yeah. seriously, and it's a it's a cost. You know, yeah. it's a cost that we burden. But uh, at the same time, it's a, it's. A, 
it's something where we work within the city's parameters. It is a public park that we're in, so we work within all the all the parameters. Um, it's 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 a burden that we're happy to accept because we want the event to be safe. We want to have everyone to have a great experience at the event. So we yeah. take a lot of time with security. We take a lot of time with uh, cleaning and things of that nature, just Can to I keep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you said the word security. Oh yes. I mean that Huge. now. Now you have a public event. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. has got to be paramount right It's not now. the highest priority. Yeah. Um, not only do we have our own security that we bring in, we've always been extremely fortunate to have a great relationship with the fine San Jose Police mm -hmm. Department. They send over, uh, not only do they send over some great officers, last year we were uh, extremely fortunate to have I don't know if you guys follow this, but our local city council member for our district is Raul Perales, okay. who also is a police officer, okay. and he was on site in uniform several okay. nights. Nice. Great to have them out there. Great to have, you know, the police also support it. They, they buy, um, the Police Officers Association uh, buys a tree every year, mm -hmm. and uh, we just love uh, working with them. But without question, mm -hmm. and, and especially in recent years, it is uh, continues to become uh, more and more of a priority just to make sure our events uh, is wonderful. So, uh, so you guys really, in 2012, came along, and, and you really Really rescued this event for the the community. Where, where do you see now that you, you've got a, a stabilized sort of event, mm. this tradition is continuing? Where do you see this headed in the future? What are your goals wow. and dreams for? We're Christmas in the park. Uh, we, you know, coming up on year forty, we we see another forty years of being a yeah. free resource to the public. We always want to maintain that free resource. Mm -hmm. We want to grow our impact on our community. I think, and, and this is me personally, mm -hmm. but I think our organization would agree that we have a, an opportunity on the philanthropic side mm -hmm. uh, with. I can pretty much guarantee 700,000 people are going to come to our event next year. We have an opportunity to outreach to them and yeah. really get that crowd working on the issues and, and, and contributing and, and putting that dollar in or mm -hmm. putting that $5 in, knowing that it's going to go back into our community and that we're, we're doing more for our community, that we're turning that around. I see that as a potential future. I also see technology. You know, I, 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 I don't want to you know, mm -hmm. overplay this, but... Uh, some tech companies in this area, some of the big ones that are even located downtown, are seeing the opportunity that Christmas in the Park presents okay. for them to really be a part of it and, and support the community while at the same time introducing some really cool technology to our crowds. So yeah. um, outside of that 2012 challenge, and, uh, that, mm -hmm. and what, what are some of the challenges you faced right now? Um, you know, uh, the challenges are, uh, are along the lines of... Um, uh, I, I don't want to say this is a challenge. This is an opportunity. We have an opportunity coming up, and, and I'm happy to share this with you because it's, it's all, you know, but, but the uh, NCAA, uh, the National uh, College mm -hmm. Association, yeah. of mm -hmm. they've uh, uh, chosen San Jose as the host city for the National College Football Championships for mm -hmm. this coming year. Okay. So as we finish Christmas in the Park, San Jose is going to be taken over by the NCAA for this massive football game that's happening at the very beginning of January. It's an exciting opportunity for the city of San Jose. Just, I mean, I mean, it's just great. It's 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 almost uh, equal to the Super Bowl in terms of the size, and, and it's great for San Jose. At the same time, you know, um, we're, we're going out of our way to to, to work with them uh -huh. to allow them to appreciate this park that you know we've oh, had this tradition okay. in for years. I, I wouldn't call it a challenge because they're great people, and it's a great organization, and we're excited to be working with them and supporting them. Okay. Uh, okay. But uh, at the same time, you know, uh, this is our forty-year-old <laughs> tradition in San Jose, yeah. and uh, <laughs> yeah. We take it very seriously, as do our generations of uh, of attendees. They take it very seriously, and uh, it's very important. Well, Joe, I mean, it's, it's obvious for anybody watching that you love Christmas in the Park. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're enthusiastic about it. <laughs> What, what are the things that you like best about it? What are the rewards that, that, that you walk? With? Um, I get to go. Uh, you know, I I spend about. 37 of the 40 days of Christmas in the park in the park myself. I'm spending mm -hmm. a lot of time there and I see I see everyone who comes through the mm -hmm. park and that's I, I know it sounds a little cheesy but yeah. really just to see the families enjoying it mm -hmm. just to see the couples on a date a first date you know uh, just people having true fun in in the most in the most pure, one of the most pure environments you could possibly have. I love that. The feeling of community, bringing people together. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, you know I, I also love I hate it, I love, I, I kind of love that the people are counting on us. People mm -hmm. are expecting it. Mm -hmm. They're waiting for it. I mean, we don't yeah. we, we don't do a lot of advertising mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A half a million people are going to show up mm -hmm. for this. You know, right. it's it's something that's happening. Uh, so that really does it keeps me going. It keeps me going. And how no. about how about Joe? Sure. Um, <laughs> how about Joe? Any personal goals, aspirations that you've 
Yeah, I love working in this nonprofit space, and I've had some incredible opportunities over the years. You know, uh, there's a there's a couple other uh, you know nonprofits I'll mention in the area. There's a, a nonprofit in Morgan Hill called One Step Closer Therapeutic Riding. I won't mm -hmm. go into details, okay. but they're amazing. Yeah. They're changing lives. Is Another horses. Horses. Oh, oh. It touches my heart, you know, and they're great people. Uh, there's an organization in downtown San Jose called Hunger at Home that's taking uh, excess prepared food yes, and uh, keeping Madison, it out of the trash. Madison, Madison Wind. Wind. It's just an amazing organization. That's a great organization. I see myself... Uh, trying to find a way to support all these organizations okay, okay. and really, really bring uh, attention to those or issues that really need attention. Awesome. Okay. Um, as a follow-up, sure. can we, um, website, is there a website? Please. To, yeah. Okay, going to get that. A couple quick things. Join us at christmasinthepark.com, spelled okay. just like it sounds. Okay. Uh, I, I just point this out, it's not a plug, but we do our annual fundraiser every summer in July, Christmas in July, oh, July okay. 21st. Oh, we're going to um, we'll put okay. that on. We'd then. love to have everyone well, that come up. So you mentioned it. What, what is it? What is Christmas? July 21st. Well, okay. okay, so where Christmas in the Park is coming up on 40 years old, yeah. our annual summer fundraiser is celebrating its own 25th anniversary this year. Okay. We'll pull 500 to 600 people out to History Park. Okay. We throw a fun party. We have games on site. We have auctions. We have a 200-foot-long zip line, mm. which is so much fun. We had it last year, and everybody rode the zip line. Um, it's a great night. It's a, uh, we, we bring a great group of people together. We dance. We have live music. Uh, and we raise a lot of money for this event, and uh, we have a lot of fun doing it. So I encourage everybody to join us for Christmas in July. Cool. Tables and tickets available. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Good. <laughs> well, great. Joe, thanks for coming. My pleasure. Thanks for sharing your enthusiasm for this tradition that is Silicon Valley. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. So Thank, you. Thank you so much. It's great. The following is a public service announcement test to determine if you need a fishing license and boat registration before you head out on the water. Let us begin. Are you a pelican? Does this look like your house? Is this your idea of fishing with friends? Do you use your feet as fishing hooks? Are you your own boat? Do you have webbed feet? No, I mean like a... That's the one. Do you want this in your favorite lake? It. Yuck. Yike. No thanks, mister. Regardless how you answer, you need to be licensed and registered because it helps local conservation efforts protect the very natural resources you enjoy boating and fishing in for generations to come. Do your part at TakeMeFishing.org. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you for watching Valley Homes on TV. I'm Debbie and Hard Giordano. Todd Hello. Flesner here as well. Yeah, uh, Todd's our local uh, loan broker expert, and I've got some real estate experience that we can give to you folks. So uh, thank you very much for watching um, Channel 26 Cable uh, Comcast. So. Yeah, so um, what's going on with the market these days, well, Deb? We, we were talking about this <laughs> offline. Um, we're now... Um, Four, five months into the new year, mm -hmm. um, as you know, the stock market has started to shake a little bit. It has. Um, last weekend, I uh, had an open house here in Milpitas. I had about half the amount of traffic through uh, a buyer's looking that okay. I normally would have. That's kind of a precursor to say what's going on with the marketplace. Okay. Um, I don't know how to read it yet. Maybe folks that want to tune into our show in a few weeks, maybe we can get a better read on mm -hmm. where th that's going to factor out into the housing market pricing um, I usually expect more offers and I get less offers on a house so mm -hmm. I don't know um, what are you seeing from the buying end of uh, the buyers that you're pre-qualifying well um, I think it takes a little bit of time sometimes for what's what you're seeing directly on the ground to kind of filter through to people who who are in the market right um, and for that news to spread so I think that you know, folks who are, are looking now still are expecting a very, very strong seller's market, tight buyer's market. Um, but, you know, we're starting to see interest rates creep up. Right. And so there's some concern 
about that. Uh, as you mentioned, the stock market and some waivers with that. Uh, are, are you having buyers having to come back? And are you having to requalify them on the higher rate? And how, or are they okay? Or how does that work out? Well, you know. I, I tend to be fairly conservative in my approach, and so I, I, you know, I don't put people right on a razor's thin edge of terms of what they can qualify okay. for or not. We, you know, we we talk about this. Let's have a plan B, right? Because markets can be volatile, and you know, do we want to set you up for being successful, or do we want to set you up for a very stressful situation if there's a turn in the market? that you know you go from being qualified to not qualified and so that's that's just the, my approach to it but uh, yeah if there's an, a, a significant enough increase in interest rates it it may change the ability of somebody to qualify and that can also play into a factor of the availability of buyers being able to qualify and it, buy a product exactly. so i'm not certain whether we're seeing this as a seasonal slowdown because mm -hmm. typically in the summer months uh, right. People go on vacations. There's a lot. And I know there's graduations going. There's a lot of things that might limit people from right. out being out house hunting. Right. So um, I've got offers due tomorrow on the one this weekend. So we'll see. I'm not getting a strong feeling mm -hmm. that I'm going to get multiple offers on that right. house. Where typically, if they had sold it three or four months ago, they could be seeing six or ten offers right. on that home. Right. And I priced it well within reason. Mm -hmm. In fact, below um, be below appraised right. value. Well, and I know I, I had a conversation this morning with um, a listing agent with the buyer I'm working for where there are multiple offers still, Fremont property. Um, so the, the person I'm uh, working with with their loan, um, basically the same price as someone else who coming in um, on the property, but an all-cash offer. And But um, this interesting in their way in the certainty of a loan that's been fully vetted versus a cash offer and whether or not that you know that cash offer is is real ah right okay um and you know as, as you may have seen as well and, um these some of these cash offers they're a little bit ethereal sometimes mm -hmm, right mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, they, what, they, what, what is it actually <laughs> yeah i mean a seller their radar goes up when they hear an all cash offer but right. is it is it true? Is it right. they have proof of funds and where are they exactly. going to get their funds from? Is it stock market? Is it you know? There's a yeah. lot of exactly. So, so yeah, you know they have they have to liquidate stocks. How long does it take? Are there tax consequences they may not have taken into account? Or are those funds coming internationally? Yeah. And there are more problems for folks who are bringing funds into the country yeah. with getting those funds cleared. Yeah. So there, are, you know, uncertainties with that. And so it was an interesting conversation. Mm -hmm. And um, so are we seeing a turn in the market yet or not? Yeah, it's hard to tell. Yeah, it's because hard it, to tell. It takes a little bit for so, that to, to so, emerge. So the homes that I yeah. do work with in Milpe, they're mm -hmm. all single-family detached. Right. Garages, yards mm -hmm. for dogs and kids to play out the front yard. Right. and all. I still think that that's going to be a hot commodity. I've talked mm -hmm. about that over the years. Right. All we're building out new now is just these condos, right. townhomes, no yards, no, you mm -hmm. know. So I do think the single-family home detached market in Milpitas will stay strong. That's my prediction. Okay. Um, just, again, have to be careful, uh -huh. as I told you. Um, mm -hmm. I'm staging them, right. prepping them to, to be pristine mm -hmm. so they stand out amongst the inventory, right. and pricing them right. Sure. So. And, you know, we're seeing a little bit of uncertainty as well in the financial markets. We're seeing what's known as a flattening of the yield curve, where the, the yields on short-term okay. interest rates and long-term interest rates are moving together. And that usually is a sign of some uncertainty, okay. um, perhaps of maybe some economic slowdown, although we're not seeing those numbers yet. But it's, you know, maybe off on the, on the horizon. We're, you know, seven or eight years into an expanding economy. But I, I attend these monthly broker meetings, uh, the Santa mm -hmm. Clara County Board of Realtors, and this morning's meeting, we talked about the strength of the local economy. Mm -hmm. I mean, a lot of companies are still hiring yes. here. Mm -hmm. So, I, you know, I we've seen the down economy, mm -hmm. and I just don't see things we're in it yet. I, I, right. I don't think we're there. We're, we're in a little bit of a bubble here. Yeah. You're right. A little. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about yeah. some numbers. Mm -hmm. So, um, Milpitas, uh, the average 
single family home price in April of 2017 yeah. was $1,016,000. dollars and last month, it jumped up to $1,224,000. Okay. So we'll watch that and see yes. if that holds. And then the same with a medium price. It went from 931000 up to one million two forty four. dollars So um, just what we predicted, we're going to have a very strong um, single-family home market. And here's the condo. It, condo market barely uh, increased at all. April 2017, it went from 806000 average price to now, last month, 883. Okay. See the difference? Yes, absolutely. See, the single family was about a two to $250,000 bump. Mm -hmm. And then um, the median price went from 839 to 940 for the townhomes. Okay. So they're, they're flattening out mm -hmm. uh, in terms of appreciation. Um, in the single family homes, so still I think, the, are going to be very, very the strong. The appeal is there on the single family. Absolutely, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, good. Um, you know, still, uh, still a good time to buy. Anytime you can buy is a good I time. Think isn't? So. <laughs> I think We've always said that, but I think it's it's really, really true. Because uh, uh, buying a home, um, y you buy into a neighborhood. You have you have a place to stay where. Let, you know, as long as you make mortgage payments, mm -hmm. you not you don't have to leave. Where a right. landlord can give you thirty or sixty day notice, and you've got to uproot your family. Um, you also can buy into a school district. You can mm -hmm. s have certainty that your children are going to go to a certain school in a neighborhood. I mean, yeah. there's so much value to home ownership. Well, absolutely, and um, you know, compared to rent, where you're not in control of whether there's an increase or not. Yeah, if you have a nice, stable, fixed rate loan, you've locked in your housing costs for the long term. Absolutely. So there, again, another reason to Another own. reason to buy. <laughs> so. Well, um, I look forward to uh, our next guests, our next interviewees, and um, I think we should close the show for now. And yeah, thanks for joining us, folks. Uh, contact information? Um, yeah, T. Flessner at opusadvisors.com. Um, shoot me a quick email of questions. And for myself, Giordano DJ at AOL.com. It's a pleasure uh, bringing to you our show, and we'll see you in a few weeks.